Hello guys, um, welcome to our class for today. This is Noble Mind Science Tutors Online and I remain at Noble Mind Care. For our class for today, we are going to be treating electrostatic, electrostatic or static electricity. So please just get your writing materials so that uh, we can go through the class. But before then, please, if you have not subscribed to this channel, Please subscribe to this channel click on the description bell so that whenever we upload a new video youtube will notify you this is physics class direct to your very doorstep so you can invite your friends so that they can also come to this channel to enjoy what you are enjoying here you can also help us to spread the message please reach us through the whatsapp number that is showing direct on your screen that's okay so far we have uploaded some reasonable numbers of videos so if you have gone through our videos and you like what we are doing, please give us a like, give us a thumbs up, and also give us a comment. Thank you so much for being with us thus far. If you are also a returning subscriber, thank you so much for coming back. We promise to give you the best in physics and also help you to become the best in physics. Alright, so today we are looking at static electricity. So hope you are ready. So let's go straight to our class. Okay, so we are talking about static electricity today, and um, when you say static, it means it is an electricity that does not move. You know, something that does not move, or something that is at rest, is said to be static. Is that okay? So, static electricity or electrostatic is a type of electricity that does not flow from one point to another in the substance in which it is produced. So, it is like... Um, an electric charge that is at rest and that is a static electricity you know when we're talking about static electricity that is where we discuss we talk about uh, charging a conductor by induction by contact charging a good a good leaf electroscope by induction and contact and so in this particular class we are also going to be looking at all that now it is a common knowledge that sometimes when you rub a biro cover on your hair vigorously and you bring it close to a small piece of paper that small piece of paper will be attracted okay so if you have not observed that before you can do it now just tear a very small piece of paper take a biro cover and you rub it on your hair very vigorously then bring it close to the piece of paper you see that the piece of paper will be attract attracted Okay, so that is one observation that you can get. Another one is that if you bring a plastic ruler and you rub it very vigorously on the sleeve of your shirt, then bring it close to a piece of paper, you also discover that the piece of paper will be attracted. Also, in a very in a dry day, if you comb if your hair is very dry and you use a plastic comb to comb your hair, you'll be hearing some kind of a uh, cracking sound. All these um, observations and experiences is due to electric charge. So the plastic material that you use to rub your hair vigorously by friction acquires electric charge. So we can see that the plastic material is rubber of the pen or the plastic rubber and the plastic ruler they have acquired what is called electrostatic so we say that the this material have been electrostatically charged and they possess a force feed or electric force and it is this force feed or electric force that enables them to do what to attract that piece of paper okay so these are experiences that we get on a daily basis and you can just try this uh, uh, simple experiment to see if it is exactly what we have discussed so rub a um, barrel cover on your hair vigorously and bring it close to a small piece of paper and see if it will attract it so this shows that the barrel cover has acquired electric charge right so they have been electrostatically charged and they possess a force feed and it is our force feed that enables them to be able to attract that piece of paper now 
we have two types of charges is that okay so that is what we're going to discuss in the next slide so here we are looking at production of charges now we have two types of charges so we have positive and negative charge so how can you make a substance to have a positive charge or a negative charge all right so there are two types of charges we have negative and positive charges so if you want to have a positive charge you bring a glass rod and rub it with silk silk is like your cloth yeah like the shirt that you wear you know you, you know what is sick now that tiny cloth you know so if you bring a glass rod and you rub it with sick you will have you will produce a positive charge on the glass rod then if you want to produce negative charge you bring an ebonite rod and rub it with four if you bring an ebonite rod and you rub it with four you will produce negative charge on the ebonite rod if you rub a glass rod with sick you will produce positive charge on the glass rod please you need to take note of this i put a summary below but you have to take note of this so when a charged glass rod is brought close to a charged ebonite rod you know glass rod positive ebonite rod is a negative <coughs> so if you bring two unlike charges close together what will happen there will be attraction so because you have positive and negative charge if you bring them close together there will be attraction then if you bring a glass rod close to a glass rod these are two like charges so that is the law of uh, static electricity that like charges repair on like charge it does what they attract so if you bring a glass rod that is positive charge close to a glass rod that is also positive charge there will be the observation that you are going to have is that of repulsion the two rod will push each other they will push apart is that okay so you will have repulsion so in summary from what we have discussed so far is that a glass rod rub with sick we produce positive charge and an ebonite rod rub with four we produce a negative charge then a glass rod and a glass rod will give you repulsion a glass rod and an ebonite rod will do what attraction because these are unlike uh, charges an ebonite rod and an ebonite rod is repulsion because these are like charges so like charges will repair on like charges will do what they will attract i hope that is clear right like charges repulsion on like charges uh, attract on like charges attraction like charges repulsion okay so having known this now we are still going further on this topic to discuss the good leaf electroscope but before then before we talk about the good leaf electroscope we need to look at the laws of static electricity although we've, we've mentioned them already the law says that like or similar charges repair each other unlike or opposite charges attract each other so this is basically the statement of the law of static electricity now we know that there are some materials that will allow electrons to flow through them why others will not allow electricity to flow through them those materials that allow electrons to flow through them easily are called conductors an example of them you have metals you have damp air you have graphite you have salt solutions and then you have the human body those that will not allow electrons to flow through them easily are called insulators and you have plastic you have polythene ebonite sea glass and wood so these are examples of conductors and uh, insulators okay 
those are examples of conductors and insulators so i mentioned the gold leaf electroscope and the gold leaf electroscope is an instrument used for detection and testing of small electric uh, charges um, most laboratory So the gold leaf electroscope actually is an instrument that is used to detect and test for small charges. That's okay. So in your laboratory, in most laboratory you might not have it, but it's, you can construct it. But if you cannot, I know this is a topic that you need to know. So you can you follow through with the pictures that I will be displaying later on. But it is good you understand what happens in the gold leaf uh, electroscope it's a simple instrument right it's a simple instrument that has a cap and uh, <clears throat> then there's a rod inside that has a gold leaf on it a gold leaf can expand it can diverge or it can um, can contract as the case may be so the gold leaf electroscope can be charged either by contact or by induction as depend on what you want to or, or it depend on the charge that you want the gold leaf electroscope to have or it depends on the charge that you want to test on the gold leaf electroscope is that okay so if you want to charge the gold leaf electroscope by contact you bring a charge body and slide it on the cap of the gold leaf electroscope okay so whatever charge that that charge body contains that is the charge that the gold leaf electroscope was to have so charging will pass from the charge body through the cap to the rod and the leaf will be observed to diverge or open so if the charge that is on the cap of the gold leaf electroscope is the same charge that is on the leaf you will observe diversion i mean there will be divergence that is the leaf will open the gold leaf will open to diverge okay so it's just like if you bring an ebonite rod you know an ebonite rod normally carries a negative charge because when you rub an ebonite, an ebonite rod with four it will acquire a negative charge so if you bring an ebonite rod close to the cap I mean, if you bring it and use to rub the cap of the gold leaf electroscope, the gold leaf electroscope will acquire negative charge by contacts. And the reverse is also the case. If you want a positive charge, you bring a positively charged glass rod and rub it on the cap of the gold leaf electroscope, it will acquire positive charge. And you will know by the divergence of the gold leaf all right so that is one way of charging the gold leaf electroscope another way of charging the gold leaf electroscope is by induction is by induction induction means that you bring in a charge body close to the cap but it will not touch the cap of the gold leaf the, uh, the, the gold leaf electroscope so you must make sure that the charge you are bringing does not touch it but it is close to the cap of the gold leaf electroscope so if you want to charge by induction you place a charge body near the cap of the electroscope without any contact with it between the two they must not come in contact so there are about four basic steps in carrying out that uh, process okay so assuming you want to charge you want the gold leaf electroscope to acquire or to have positive charge okay so now i want to charge our gold leaf electroscope with positive charge we want the gold leaf electroscope to have positive charge so if you want your gold leaf electroscope to have a positive charge you will bring a negative charge near the cap of the gold leaf electroscope so step one is that an ebonite rod is brought close to the cap of the electroscope remember an ebonite rod will carry negative charge when you rub it with four don't forget so when you bring the ebonite rod close to the cap of the electroscope positive electrons will be attracted you know positive electrons will be attracted towards the cap of the electroscope 
why negative electron will be repaired to the leaf of the gold leaf electron. I will show you the drawing of all that I'm saying now, right? I will, I will show you the drawing and the diagram for it in the next uh, slide. Okay, so positive electron will be attracted to the cap of the gold leaf, while negative electron will be repaired towards the leaf of the gold leaf, right? So that is step number one. Now, the next step is that you use your finger to touch. You know that the human body is a very good conductor of electrons. So once you use your finger to touch the cap of the gold leaf, the negative electrons will flow. The negative electrons will flow from the gold leaf to the earth. That is etting. So the next step is that you will etch the gold leaf electroscope. So etting is for you to touch it with your finger. Negative electron will flow from the from the gold leaf and move to the earth. So you will observe a collapse. Right? You will observe that the gold leaf will collapse. The gold leaf in the electroscope will collapse. The next thing is that you remove your finger. Why you are removing your finger from the gold leaf cap, you still hold the negatively charged ebonite rod in place make sure that you don't remove it it will still remain in place so when you remove your finger net positive charge will remain on the cap of the gold leaf once you have removed your finger and the negatively charged ebonite rod is still in place only positive charge will now remain on the cap of the gold leaf the next step is for you to remove your ebonite rod now, when you remove your ebonite rod, the positive charge that are on the cap of the gold leaf will now be evenly distributed. And that distribution will now cause a divergence of the gold leaf. Okay, so all that I've said now is what I'm going to show you now in the next slide. So let's go and see them. Okay, so this is exactly what I have discussed so far. This is your good leaf. This is your ebonite rod. You bring it close to the cap, or this is the cap of the good leaf. So you bring it close to the cap of the good leaf, and you see that negative charge will be repelled. This is the good leaf. This whole piece of equipment is called the good leaf electroscope. So this is the good leaf. Right, the gold leaf is like a cigarette four. If you have seen cigarette four, they are like cigarette four that are tied to this rod. This rod is a conductor. This is an insulator. Everything on that here is just like this, like glass. So these are poor conductor. Then this is the main conductor. Okay, all these are insulators. So this gold leaf is like a cigarette four. Okay, so when you bring this ebonite rod that is negatively charged to the, close to the cap. Positive charge will be attracted to the cap, one negative charge will be repelled to the leaf. That is why you see that the leaf will now diverge. There will be divergence of the leaf. Now, when you etch this electroscope by touching the cap with your hands, negative charge will flow to the earth. It will cause the gold leaf to collapse. The next thing that you do is that why holding this in place, why holding the ebonite in place, remove your hand from this, uh, remove your finger from this cap. And then when you remove your finger, you find out that the, what will remain here will be the net positive charge. The next step is for you to remove this. Now when you remove the ebonite rod, this positive charge that they will now be evenly distributed and that will lead to the expansion or the divergence of the good leaf. So by this method now, you have charged this good leaf with uh, what? With uh, positive charge so if you want to charge a gold leaf positive charge you bring a negatively charged body then if you want to charge the gold leaf with negative charge you bring a positive charge body and the positive charge body is a glass rod okay so this is how to charge the gold leaf electroscope with by induction so what I have here is charges can be produced by friction, contact, and by induction. If you want to produce charges by, okay, so we are done with that. So if you want to produce charges by friction, you rub the material against, by friction, you rub it together. 
okay so that's what we have discussed before that for you to produce positive charge rub a glass rub with sick then for negative charge you rub an ebonite rub with four the ebonite rub will become negative charge okay so this is how to produce charges another method if for a conductor another method is what i will also show you now Okay, so assuming these are two conductors that are in contact, I want to charge these uh, conductors with a by contact. Okay, you want to charge them by contact. You bring um, an ebonite rod. This is um, this is supposed to be a glass rod. A glass rod is positively charged, so this is not ebonite, and that's a typo error. So please uh, pardon me for that. I it's a glass rod, so you can please pardon me for that, right? Okay, fine. Okay, so you bring a bring a glass rod close to these conductors you find that a negative charge will be repaired towards the um, positive charge will be repaired towards the end of conductor D Why negative charge will be attracted towards this conductor C okay so the next thing that you will do is that while holding this in place you separate these two con separate the two conductors you will discover that this um, this D has been charged by contact while this is charged by induction. This one will be charged by contact while this is charged by induction. So this is how to charge a conductor by contact. Another one is by induction. As I said before, when you want to charge a body by induction, you bring the charging um, body close to the end of an uncharged conductor so assuming this is a conductor that is starting on um, on an insulator so this is a negatively charger so this is an ebonite rod right so if you bring an ebonite rod close to one end of this conductor you find that a negative charge will be repaired towards the Opposite end, why positive charges will be attracted towards the charging body. All right. So the next thing that you will do, just as we did for the Gulliver electroscope, you etch by touching the conductor, and all the negative charges will flow to the earth. While you are etching it, ensure that this charging body remains in place. Then, when you remove your hand from the earth, or when you remove your hand from the conductor, you now remove the charging body. You find out what you will have will be net positive charge. Okay, so positive charge will be attracted near the end close to the inducing rod, while negative charge will be repaired to the extreme end. So to make the positive charge permanent, the end is touched, etted, while the rod is still in place. When the rod is then removed, the positive charge are evenly distributed on the conductor so that is exactly what i just discussed with you the reverse is the case if you want a negatively charged conductor you are going to use a positively charged body which is a, a glass rod okay so i hope this is clear and uh, you understand what i've tried to discuss with you on static electricity so we'll still go further to discuss um, other areas of static electricity okay the other area of static electricity that i want you to take note of is distribution of charges on a conductor now it has been observed by experiment that discharge per unit area of surface or charge density in a conductor is highest at the sharpest point of the conductor so if you have a conductor that has a shape the concentration of charges are more on this sharp end than on the other side. Is that okay? Then, if you have a circular body 
or a uniform body, right? The charges are evenly distributed on that particular body. So this is what I've represented in this drawing. And I think this drawing makes it clear for you. All right. So this aspect, I just put this one in tabular form. This is a summary of what we have discussed concerning the gold leaf electroscope. So if your electroscope is negatively charged and you bring a negative, a negative body close to the cap, there will be increase in divergence because this is what light charges. Light charges will repair. So there will be increase in divergence on the gold leaf. So this table, I uh, really want you to, you can copy it in your note. It is very important that you know this. Okay, so because these are questions that you can have in your WIAC or GC, you know. So please take note of this. Then if the gold level screw is negative and you bring a positive body, that is on like charges. On like charges, they will attract. So the divergence will decrease. The leaf will diverge, the divergence will decrease. Then positive, positive body, there will be increase. If it is positive, negative, there will be decrease the divergence. Then if you the gold leaf electrical is positive and you bring an uncharged body, there will be decrease the divergence. The same thing too, if it is negative and you bring an uncharged body, there will also be uh, a decrease in divergence. All right. So these are some summary information that you need to take note of. Okay. So we cannot conclude discussion on static electricity without mentioning briefly um, lightning conduction, right? Production of lightning and lightning conduction. You cannot complete it without mentioning lightning conductor. Lightning is something that you experience when sometime before the rain falls or when rain is falling you will hear thunder and uh, lightning that's okay the two normally goes together so what causes the lightning and how do we pre prevent lightning from having effect on our building is what we we discussed briefly here so the lightning conductor is actually used look at this drawing here you know, if you see some building, we see um, you will see uh, a spark. You see an iron with that has some kind of a cross on top that that is connected along the side of the building and is dug on the ground. This um, piece of equipment is called a lightning conductor. And what does this lightning conductor normally do? It is the main function is to prevent the building from being affected when there is lightning strike is that okay so that's why you see that in most buildings especially tall building you see lightning conductors at the top and why is it placed at the top why it is placed at the top is that it is at this top that you have charges so the charges here they have effects they react with the charge on the cloud every cloud has charges it can either be positive or negative depending on the inducing body yeah, depending on the design body. So the lightning conductor is used to prevent a tall building from being damaged when struck by lightning. The lightning conductor is a metal rod installed or connected to the earth by means of a copper cable. So that's what I've discussed. So if, for instance, a negative charge cloud passes through over a building, the sharp points of this uh, spike will gain an induced charge which is opposite to the charge on the cloud so which means that if a negative charge cloud passes through this building the charge that will be on this spike will be positively charged so these charges will neutralize the charge ionizes the nearby air and the charged air molecules flows upward from the points this discharges the cloud before the lightning flash occurs so before the lightning flash will occur definitely you see a cloud will form. So this lightning, the, this, this lightning conductor, we have to discharge the cloud before the lightning flash will occur. And by so doing, the effect of the lightning on this building will be totally minimized. Because any charge, any electron that is released will be conducted and etched straight.
So lighting conductors are generally used to prevent beauty from destruction when struck by thunder or lightning. So when when the thunder or when the cloud releases those electrons, the, con the lighting conductor will help to conduct the electrons straight to the earth and neutralize the effect of this of the elect of the lightning strike on the building. Is that okay? So I think briefly that is um, the function of the lighting conductor and that is how it was. Is that okay? So you can also get more details from your textbooks. Right. Then I just quickly mentioned that this piece of instrument, electrophorus, is used to transfer charges. It's used to transfer charges. So the instrument that is used to transfer charges is called electrophorus. All right, guys. So I think this is where we're going to stop our class for today. Thank you so much for your time. Um, please continue to study and read your textbook because you cannot be a better you without studying all right you cannot be a better you without studying and physics require a lot of study if you follow the whole if you follow the lectures so far you see that physics require a lot of effort you cannot be lazy and then you say we are a good physics student I don't, I don't think that is possible all right so please continue to study your book and then be a better you all right but before i go Okay, so please guys if you have not subscribed to the, our channel please subscribe to the channel click on the notification bell so that when we upload a new video youtube will notify you we thank you sincerely for being with us you can also invite your friends to enjoy what you are enjoying here this is no my science tutorials online you can reach us through the whatsapp number that i showing on your screen please give us a like give us a thumbs up and then so that you can continue to encourage us I remain notable Michael, so thank you so much for being with us. I'll see you in our next class. Thanks.